Well, we've been transitioning since about 1905. <laughs> so through that transition, we've seen so many changes. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent of it all. The Lake Como Park was deeded through the city to be a Negro park for the families in Como. All things were done there. It was the only place that so many of us could go and enjoy a evening or, or, or a weekend, and all of the community used it for picnics, for uh, summer bashes. We'd have a DJ come in the summer, and uh, we'd have a jukebox set up. The housing developed here in Lake Como, around the lake, and uh, so it's, it's a heartbeat. That lake. We've got uh, so many major spots that we like to spotlight here in our community. Not only the lake, going back as far as 2014, with the neighborhood empowerment zone, we developed a strategic plan for Como. So we got with our councilman at that time and the different departments, we came together and we brainstormed about what we'd like to see in this community. And because at that time there were so many abandoned lots and uh, homes that needed uh, demolition. We wanted to see infill, replace all of those empty lots with homes that people could live in. And it seems to be happening. It is happening. It is happening a little bit faster than we thought. <laughs> We've got a, a patrol officer, our citizens on patrol captain. He reports to us monthly and he says, we now have 289 new homes here in the community. We're really excited about having the new center come into place. It was a long time coming from where we were to where we are now. The way the city came in and worked with us, and it did take a little bit of time with the changing the renderings. No, we don't want that. Well, this is what you can have. Uh, well, can you add this to what, what we can have? And, but as a result, it turned out to be an amazing. The gym is absolutely amazing. It will fold down and you can have uh, multiple things going on in it. Uh, at the same time. And then the many classrooms and the technology that's come with it, it is truly a blessing. One of the biggies will be the streetscape. Uh, that's a $9 million project where uh, uh, Horn Street will be converted. If you drove down the main street here, Horn Street, you would have seen light poles that were dilapidated or needed a uh, uh, facelift. A lot of facelift will come with that. We do have some abandoned buildings that were businesses. For Horn Street, we'd love to see uh, businesses. Uh, I know we've got a few mom and pop, uh, but even uh, mixed-use uh, buildings uh, would be nice. But more than that, the beautification of it, the trees, uh, the flowers, uh, maybe even a, a medium that went down, uh, bike trails. Some of the things that you see in other neighborhoods, I think we warrant that as well. Uh, this past year of the pandemic, we would have celebrated 70 years of an annual parade. And you talking about a heartbreak because that was going to be a milestone for us. We were looking forward to our Fort Worth Public Art uh, being placed that day, that July 4th. We had so much planned. That project actually goes back to the 90s. The late 90s, we started talking about a way to remember one of our founders, uh, which was W.H. Wilburn. We stand on the shoulders of some really strong people. So they poured it into us. All of the people here in this community are volunteers. We come up out of our homes, our jobs, and we labor to get things done. Positive change comes from positive people. So with that, it, it's really about the bodies, the people, and the mindset that makes it happen. You don't have to have a dime to have the heart to want better and want more. The resources will come. Those tools are out there and they're available to us and they're due us. And wanting the better for the community, that makes a difference. When the city wants better and we desire better, the two together will make it happen. So uh, that's a very positive tool. Camp Bowie Boulevard is one of the oldest streets in the city of Fort Worth and it really is a street like no other. That's why we say it's uniquely Fort Worth. It's named after the World War I training facility that was here and it later matriculated into neighborhoods and a long boulevard that holds a lot of history for the city. We have red line bricks that historically come from an area just west of Fort Worth we're very passionate about. In the early 2000s, a group of property owners and business owners uh, decided that they wanted to make a major improvement on uh, Camp Bowie Boulevard. We're a six mile long district, so you really do have a diversified set of not only neighborhoods, but also uh, what types of shops. So the catalyst was that there was no single body that was representing everybody's 
common interest of being on the boulevard. Camp Bowie District actually manages the PID, Public Improvement District number 19 for the City of Fort Worth. We collect 10 cents per $100 valuation. It's a voluntary tax on the property owners, but they choose the board of directors and they choose the officers. Our public improvement district, which is guaranteed through the charter at the state legislature, allows us local control of tax dollars, specifically to the properties within our boundary. So we as a body can decide how to use those for the th four main pillars that we have, which is safe, clean, green, and advocacy. Let's start off with safe. We have roughly eight hours of additional off-duty uh, Fort Worth PD uh, patrolmen who uh, direct their efforts towards panhandling, unwanted solicitations, uh, repeat burglaries, um, and our NPOs really do a great job of communicating with the neighbor associations, trade groups like ours, uh, and directly with businesses if they have a specific problem. Uh, we also have a daily litter patrol that we've partnered with the Presbyterian Night Shelters Upspire program where we're putting homeless people back to work. Certainly the implementation of greenery. Our stretch of roses and other uh, drought resistant plants really is the hallmark of what we can get done and accomplish with the community. So we have some smaller projects that are that definitely benefit everybody driving by, but particularly just taking a concrete island and transforming it into something that's more appealing. We've partnered with Kincaid's. They uh, help maintain this pocket park. We pay for the water and the electricity. This is a street that it's a lifestyle. The neighbors live on it, they shop on it, they eat there. It's a part of everybody's everyday travel, stopping somewhere along the boulevard. So it is part of our mission to make sure that they have as safe an experience as possible. The Las Vegas Trail neighborhood is a very old community built back in the 70s. Um, it encompasses about 33 apartment complexes and the Western Hills neighborhood as well. So there's a lot of homeowners. It's one of the most diverse neighborhoods in Fort Worth. We're looking at one third black, one third white, one third Hispanic, but also this neighborhood has different pockets of need. So there are pockets of the neighborhood that has a large refugee population, pockets of the neighborhood that has a large Hispanic population, um, an immigrant population, and there's a, a pocket of poverty in some areas that are high in crime in the neighborhood. With this diverse group of people that all live within three miles of each other. You have to have access to a lot of different services in the neighborhood. LVT Rise is a place-based nonprofit model that partners with private, for-profit, and nonprofit entities. Some of our biggest partners are the City of Fort Worth, who have helped us with the community center and getting it um, renovated. Fort Worth Library, who's giving people access to education resources, literacy resources, and job resources. Having the community center, one from just the renovation phase of it, they said it gave it a huge facelift. Even before the neighborhood, people walk in and said everything is very nice and they're very proud. They're not used to having something that's so upscale in this particular neighborhood. And we're starting to see a lot of the apartment complexes and business owners follow suit that they are also cleaning up their properties. This is our classroom. So this is where the West Fort Worth Center of Hope and other partners teach classes. They're teaching them how to work in the construction field and how to use different tools. You don't want to talk to a classroom or say out loud your personal businesses if you're trying to find something. So that's what these two private rooms are um, always available for. So we do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and that helps people with housing stability or financial stability. And sometimes people have other barriers on filling out applications such as um, they might not be literate or maybe all the applications are online because of COVID and they don't have internet or they don't have access to internet or they don't have a computer. So we have computers here, we have Wi-Fi here. We have a partnership with Terran Area Food Bank. When people in the neighborhood need something to eat, we have a food pantry that runs twice a week. Well, I need, uh, I need a little help for food. I can make a little bit, but I don't make enough to carry me through the whole month. So this helps right here. Lo que es leche, verduras, yogur, de todo. Carne también. About 25% of the people who live in this neighborhood do not have access to transportation. And some of the early advocacy that the board of LVT Rise has advocated for was um, increasing the bus line that's in this neighborhood. But we still have a lot more work to do. But we're seeing more sidewalks being put up. We're making a lot of progress. Um, violent criminal activity is down by double digits um, since the initiative started. Community members are getting access to resources. And the kids see the basketball courts coming up. That should be finished by the summer 
summertime. Yes, I will say life is getting better, um, but it's not happening fast enough. The greatest need for people in the Las Vegas Trail neighborhood is access to resources. Um, that is, has always been one of the highest priorities and a sense of community to make sure the neighborhood feels safe. 